Welcome back to DesignSmith. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Perspective Grid Tool in Illustrator. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe to support the channel. So the first step to using the Perspective Grid Tool is to open it. And you do that by showing the grid. If you're on a Mac, hit Shift-Command-I. If you're on Windows, hit Shift-Control-I. And you can also go up here to View, Perspective Grid, and Show Grid. So if you've never used this before, it can be a little bit intimidating when it first pops up, especially if you bring it up by accident. And if you do happen to bring this up by accident, say you were trying to create outlines, all you have to do is hit Shift Command I to get rid of it. However, if you're wanting to use it, this is how we use it. So the key thing to remember is that this is a very selection based tool. And what that means is there's a specific selection tool that you need to have active in order to interact with the grid. And the key thing that you want to pay attention to is this little panel right up here. If you click on it with your regular selection tool, you'll notice that you can't do anything. What we need to do is go right here to the Perspective Grid tool and change to the Perspective Selection tool. Now we can change the grid that we're editing. And I'm gonna go right down here and click and hold down and go back to the Perspective Grid tool and show you what all of these little selections mean. And if we click and hold on the top, that's gonna to create more grid lines at the top. If we click and hold on the sides, that's gonna change the perspective of the grid that we have. If we come over here to this little circle and click and hold, this expands the view of our grid going this direction. If we click and hold on this little diamond, that's also gonna change the vertical perspective of the grid. Clicking and holding on this diamond will reduce the number of grid lines. Clicking and holding on this circle will change our surface view, and you can reset this position wherever you want. And then finally clicking on any of these three circles down here, you can kind of freeform change whatever you're wanting to edit. Clicking on the left side will actually break this grid out right here, and then the same thing on the right side. So just kind of think of it as separating walls. And then we can bring this up to change our actual surface. So that's kind of a brief overview of what the actual controls do inside of the perspective grid. So let's say you're wanting to lay down some objects here. And the best example to use is to pretend like these are windows of a building. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got my perspective selection tool selected, and then I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard, and we're gonna draw a rectangle. And if you have smart guides turned on, then that will snap to those grid lines. And now we don't wanna go back to our regular selection tool because if we copy and duplicate this over, then it doesn't stay within the grid. So what we need to do is hit Shift V on our keyboard, or you can go over here and select Perspective Selection Tool. And now we can hold down either Option or Alt and Shift, and we can duplicate that over, and then hit Command D to keep making copies. And we can also place text on here. So let's type out some text really quick. And now we're gonna shift back over to our Perspective Selection Tool. And now with that tool selected, we can grab the text and it will automatically place it on that grid right there. Now, if we want to add text to this grid, we have to make sure that first our right grid is selected before we type out any text. All right, and now we grab with our perspective selection tool and we can put that text right wherever we want. Now, let's say you want to edit this text. You can have any of the selection tools selected and all you have to do is double click on it and then it'll bring it up like it's inside of a mask. Now, let's go back to our regular view and I'm going to add in a couple of circles right here. You always want to make sure that you've got your perspective selection tool selected when you're directly editing the objects that are on your grid. And whenever you're finished with this, you can simply hit escape on your keyboard. Now with your regular selection tool, let's select everything. And you may notice that even though these all have the same fill color, that it's not registering that way. Well, the reason why is because the type is still a perspective object. So we need to select both of these and go up here to object, expand, and expand object and fill and hit okay. And now they're all showing as the same color and we can just pick this up and move it wherever we want to. Now let's go back into the perspective grid and you can actually change what type of grid you're working with. And this one right here is the one point perspective grid and it works exactly the same way. So we'll just draw a rectangle here, make sure that we have shift V selected so that we can directly edit this. And you can hold down option or alt and just kind of move these free form. I'm just gonna place them wherever I wanna place them. Don't really have any regard for where I'm putting them. All right, and now let's change over to the horizontal grid. And I'm gonna put down maybe some stars. Again, make sure we have our perspective selection tool. I'm gonna put some stars here. It's gonna help to zoom in, especially when we have all those anchor points that we're dealing with. So as you can see, you can make some pretty cool stuff here. We could even blend these two together. So we have like a star line going back that way. And then if we want, we can go to object, expand, expand object and fill. I'm gonna ungroup all of them and then distribute the spacing evenly. And now let's go up here to view, perspective grid, and three point perspective. And this gives you like a 3D view of a grid. Let's do something a little bit different. I'm gonna lay down a spiral 
Let's switch over and give it a black stroke. And since I've got tool on the brain because of that spiral, we'll enlarge this up here. And now we'll switch over to the right grid and type in lateralis and place lateralis on this side. So as you can imagine, you can do some really cool things with this. You can make it a lot more complex than what I've shown you today. And people have made some pretty awesome artwork and posters using the perspective grid tool. If you'd like me to make more videos using the perspective grid tool, let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to do it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.